Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Good day to you, my friend, and welcome to the broadcast today. Thanks so much for joining us. If you can right now, reach over, pick up your copy of the Word of God, and join me, please, as we come together to study God's Word. And really, we study with two basic goals in mind. Uh, Not every day do we hit both goals, but our goal is to come together to, number one, strengthen you and I who know Christ as Savior to strengthen our lives in telling the gospel. And number two, we want to make the gospel message of Jesus Christ clear so that those that are listening who do not know Christ as Savior can have an honest, clear presentation of God's plan of salvation, and hopefully they will pray to receive Christ. To that end, we want to focus our time today. Again, get your Bible. Also get something on which you can jot some notes. I've got four words all beginning with the letter P, like in the word Peter, that I think would be helpful to you to jot down. In my hand right now, I've got a gospel tract. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It's an evangelism tool. I want to highlight this and encourage you to get this track and along with it, a free sample packet of our tracks. I'm going to talk about that here in just a moment. Right now, though, to lead into our Bible study time, let me begin this way. If I were to ask you to find just one Bible passage that, well, just had to be ranked as very high, very crucial, very foundational to a person's salvation, the whole salvation story, what verse or one passage might you select? Well, recently I asked that question of some believers, and their overwhelming consensus was that the passage needed to be John 3.16. <laughs> I was not surprised, nor did I disagree with them. It's not the only one that they mentioned, but it was the one that overwhelmingly was mentioned. But then I asked them this question. What one passage of Scripture has to be viewed, in your opinion, as a crucial and foundational passage to a believer's walk with God? Now, when I asked that question, most of the people in the group were really, really struggling to come up with an answer. So I began to ask some other probing questions, and pretty soon the group came up with an answer, and they kind of focused on one particular passage— they selected 1 John 5, verses 5 through 10 as the passage, as the most crucial and foundational passage that needed by every believer to help them in their day-to-day walk with God. And for the next few days, I want to look at those six verses. I think this group of believers really has found a crucial passage we all need. 1 John chapter 1. Get your Bible and join me there, please. I mentioned the gospel tracks here a moment ago. The one in my hand right now was simply entitled, Thank You, Your Service Was, and it's designed to be a track to give out when you're at a restaurant or when somebody does some car work for you or plumbing work or whatever the case may be. When somebody serves you, you can give them this track and it has a way for you to grade their service. Well, the highest grade on this track is this, the greatest service in the world. And you never, ever check that box. And the track explains for the person to give you the greatest service in the world that they would not only have to do the work, but then they'd have to pay the bill. And friend, nobody does that. Well, nobody except Jesus. Jesus paid it all, all to him we owe. He did the work. He paid the price so that we could be served, served up with this gift called everlasting life. Here's a great gospel tract. I have led people to Christ through this tract. It has opened many an opportunity to verbally tell the gospel. It's a great tract. 
At the end of the program, my announcer will give to you some contact information, our contact information. Use one of the methods. Give us your name. Give us your mailing address. We'll send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English tracks, including this one, the Thank You track. Please do that today. If you can't stay to the end, just visit our website, which is Bible Tracks Inc. Dot O-R-G. As you're hearing this, I am on my way home from the upper area of the Mitten of uh, Michigan. I have been speaking up there about missions and using tracks and just sharing the gospel. I just before that was in New Bern, North Carolina, sharing there about the need for people to use tracks and support the ministry of gospel radio and so on. My friend, if you would like us to come and share the ministry of tracks at your your church, contact our office, please. Well, if your Bible is open to 1 John chapter 1, beginning at verse 5, here's what the Bible says. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But If we walk in the light as he, Jesus, is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Stop right there for now. We have a lot of listeners in the state of Wisconsin, and I appreciate them so much. Well, these people in that state in particular are really familiar with the name Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi. He famously coached the Green Bay Packers, and his successes are legendary. Well, Coach Lombardi was famous for beginning his training camps every year by holding up a football in his hand in front of his professional football players and saying this, gentlemen, this is a football. No, you can't, as a football coach, get any more basic than that, can you? Well, 1 John 1, verses 5 through 10 is, for those of us who know Christ as Savior, a passage from the Word of God, which is as basic as Coach Lombardi's words were to the professional players there in the football league. Believers need to regularly and seriously rehearse the truth that's found here in 1 John 1, 5 to 10. Verse 5 begins with these words. This is the message which we have heard of him. Now, the pronoun here, this we word, W-E, refers to the disciples of Jesus. In the opening four verses of chapter 1, we read these facts, four facts. If you're taking notes, here's number one. Number one is this, fact number one, God has revealed himself to men. God has revealed himself to man. God did this in a very public way. That's my first word beginning with the letter P. God revealed himself in a public manner. He revealed himself to men in a way that allowed mere mortals to not only hear God, but also see God and handle God, because verse 1 of our passage says this, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Fact number two, God's revelation was not only public, here's my second word, it was planned. It was planned. The life of God was, verse 2 says, manifested. Now, that word does not mean discovered. The word manifested means that somebody, in this case it's God, somebody deliberately did something, did an act to reveal himself. God deliberately revealed himself to men. Fact number three, God revealed himself in such a way that those who personally experienced God's self-revelation could know it so well that they could pass it on. That's my third word, pass it on. They could pass it on to others. In verse 3, the apostle John says that the we people, the disciples, were declaring to others what they had seen, what they had heard, what they had touched. There's one more fact laid out here in the opening four verses. Not only was God's self-revelation public, it was not only planned, it was not only able to be passed on, but here's number four, God's revelation was purposeful. It was purposeful. 
listen to verses 3 and 4. I'm going to take them one at a time. Notice that two times in these verses, the word that, T-H-A-T, is used. Listen to verse 3, first of all. It says this, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that, here's number one, ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So, one purpose, one purpose God revealed himself is so that more and more people can have and hear about what the disciples experienced and that they learned. And through that hearing, more people can have fellowship, not just with the disciples, but fellowship with God, having a relationship with God. Why did God reveal himself? What purpose? Number one, so that people, not just those that were on earth in the inner circle of disciples and so on, that they could know and handle and see God, but that they could declare God to others who could also share in that fellowship. But now look at verse 4. The second use of the word that is found here. Here's what verse 4 says. And these things write we unto you that, here we go, that your joy might be full. God has revealed himself to mankind. Hebrews chapter 1 opens up by saying that God has revealed himself in many ways and in many different time frames. But here in 1 John, the very unique way that God revealed himself is being focused on. God came to earth in the person of Jesus Christ and spent time with people. Jesus is the masterful revelation of God. He is God in flesh. The Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 18 says that Jesus is the revealer of God. But John 1 1 says that Jesus is God. That's the verse that says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 18 says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and it says, we beheld his glory. Now, why? Why did God Almighty reveal himself to mankind? He did so so that people, all kinds of people can have a fellowship relationship with God. Not a fear relationship, but a fellowship relationship with God. They can have a sharing relationship because the word fellowship has the idea of sharing. What are they sharing in? They're sharing in the life of God. And by so doing, by sharing in this life, by having this fellowship with God, they will have joy, not momentary joy, not a secondary level joy, not an earthly level joy only, but they can experience the greatest joy of all time. It's the greatest joy because it's the joy whose source is in God himself. Tell me, listener friend, do you have this life and do you have this joy If you don't, it's because you don't have Jesus as your Savior. God came, revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ so that you could have a relationship, a fellowship relationship, and have joy. Receive Christ as Savior. You're a sinner. You need his shed blood. But only through his shed blood can your sins be cleansed, and you have a relationship with God. Get our tracks. They'll tell more about how to know Christ as your Savior. Listen as my announcer gives our contact information. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.